video was made for Education 305, Race and Education, taught by Keith Osajima. It was our response to the video, A Tale of O, which documented how a person is treated and made to feel like an outsider in relation to a larger group. We decided to make a video that takes this general principle and makes it specific to Colgate's campus. Colgate University was founded in 1819 by 13 white men as a Baptist theological college. In 1969, under the pressures from students, Colgate University created the Cultural Center. In 1970, Colgate University admitted its first class of women students. In 1989, 20 years after it opened the Cultural Center in an existing maintenance building, Colgate built the new Cultural Center. Designed as a learning center to promote cross-cultural understanding in the community, the Cultural Center nurtures and enhances the quality of life for students of color by developing and coordinating intellectual, educational, and social events related to the cultures of people of African, Asian, Latin American, and Native American descent. Today at Colgate, there are approximately 2,800 students, and students of color make up just slightly more than 10% of this population. What we are looking to find out in this video is how this lack of diversity causes racial tensions. Through this video, we hope to discover who feels these tensions and why. Due to the demographics of uh, students here at the Kobe campus, uh, the predominantly white students, many students of color have been made to feel like an outsider, whether in the classroom or in the social setting. Do you feel like an outsider on the Kobe campus? Um, 
I was no longer majority, I was a minority. And um, just the system of clothing, it's, it's, it's set up for a certain type of person. And in this case, it's set up for, for, for white students, for Americans. Um, most of the activities and everything that um, revolves around that. And um, anything else, if, any, if you want to make anything of it, it has to be yourself. You have to get together with a couple of friends who, are, who, who may have similar interests to, to get that across. If not, um, coding itself is just a place um, uh, for mostly white students. Yeah, well, uh, as far as the inside and outsider thing go, I think I, I'm not sure I ever really feel like an outsider just because of the way I am. Mm -hmm. Somebody tries to make me feel like an outsider, I really hold myself. I mean, I definitely feel like an insider pretty much everywhere I go. I mean, I don't, I don't feel the black-white tension, but that's the way that I've been raised. I, I mean, I've been raised in white society pretty much. The only time I have any family is entirely white. So I'm completely used to it, and just, I went to private schools. So, I mean, I'm used to being on my own, but not feeling like it. Yeah. I don't know if that's because the way, just the schools that I went to, the way they treated me, or the way that I percept the way people treat me. But I've never felt treated in any sort of bias. And I guess, you know, it's hard for me to say, because I don't, I don't think that I, I'm maybe as sensitive to, to, uh, to some of the places where there would be discrimination or, or racial issues. Um, and also the fact that I, I, I've grown up with uh, in you know, with a mixed school with uh, black students and some of my best friends. So um, in, in my case, um, I have never had any problems. And I, I guess I, I, I kind of don't really uh, even imagine it, imagine it happening in um, with other people because I'm I'm just so so uh, comfortable with with the uh, with the idea of of not being uh, discriminatory that, that I, I probably don't see it and, it, and I know I know it happens on the campus and it's just that you know that I'm finally aware of it. Stereotypes that affect all of us. Society is affected by it and so is Colgate's campus. What are some of the stereotypes you have to deal with being a person of color on this campus? Basically, as an African American woman in an academic setting, such as a classroom, um, I think that before I even um, attempt to answer a question or address an issue, um, it is looked upon as if I'm a radical, I'm aggressive, I'm this violent person. And I think that that's another unfair stereotype because it, it, it's never positive, it's always negative. And, um, in, in a way, it kind of inhibits me to be aggressive and to be assertive about the things that I truly believe in. But in a way, you know, you have to do it anyways. Oh, the belief. <laughs> um, African American students, especially, are radical if they stand up strongly for what they believe in and they voice their opinions loudly. And um, I think that scares a lot of the white community up here, and so they label us as radical. You know, why do you separate yourself? Um, one thing that, that I think was stereotype that that most people of color are given here is that, um, that this is a free ride for us. A lot of times they think that um, that we are only here because they let us in there for for their quota. But um, it, it, it really bothers me when, when most of us have worked hard for four years in high school and have, you know, busted our behinds to, to get to a school such as Kobe. And, and when you come here, you think that, you know, everyone's going to accept everyone for, for, for what they did. You know, you are faced with people telling you that, you know, that, that you're getting a free ride here. And, you know, and the stereotype is, like I said, that we're lazy, like, like I'll say, that we're lazy, that we were, you know, we're good for nothing. And those, those stereotypes, they bring it over to that. And they don't realize that we have worked just as hard, if not double as hard, to get, get into the school um, because of who we are, you know. And, I mean, that's one stereotype that I've faced, you know, for a couple of years now, that, 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 um, that this is a free life for us. Due to the immense pressure that most students of color feel on a predominantly white campus, there's an extra baggage that most students of color seem to feel. However, most students of color react in a variety of different ways. How do you react to the pressure of being an outsider on this campus? For 11 years past that, I realized that I couldn't be 
relationship you have with uh, other African American students on this campus? Is that an um, issue all for you? Is that yeah, it, it is. It's, um, there are a lot of African, I mean, I can't say exactly how they feel, but it seems to me that they feel that I'm either selling out to my race or, or I don't care or, I mean, what have you, because I'm not immediately involved in the struggle that they're going through daily. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for me considering I'm my entire family is white. I am search. I am. I am experimenting and researching these things on my own. It's much slower pace than most of the African Americans on this campus. But I mean, I played field hockey, predominantly white sport. I did well. I did crew. I mean, we did predominantly white things. I went to your private boarding schools in Massachusetts. It's just the whole way I've raised, and it seems like a lot of African Americans on this campus feel that that I just completely sold out. Mm -hmm. That I could care less. Kind of thing, and, it's, and I mean, I can understand. I mean, you, you listen to a lot of people talking and say, you know, I can't worry about what you're doing because I'm constantly in the struggle, and that's fine with me. And I don't expect them to pat me on the back or anything. But it just seems like there's a, there seems to be like underground hostility because I'm not fighting the daily struggle that they are. One is I find that um, students may feel that they're not hopeless. They become frustrated where kind of like you're going to go through your four years, get your degree, and kind of just not question anything because it's hopeless, you're frustrated. And um, another uh, reaction or response may be that um, you totally isolate yourself from, from your American people. In that you stop all dialogue, you stop questioning what your American people are doing on Kobe's campus and what administrators are doing and therefore you become enclosed into um, um, a type of community within a community and you get so wrapped up into the African American community that basically you go to class and you know you see white people and they're so distant from you and you don't expect them to understand anything anyway so you, you remain in that separate world but society is not as like that and um, I think Another response is a type of response that I um, try to um, act out is that um, you need to be critical of things. You need to respond in a way that is open to dialogue, but however, never compromising um, what you feel is is racist or sexist. Um, I see that there are students of color who kind of similarly who have basically profusely self-hatred for themselves. They really don't know who they are or where they're going. And it's a shame because when they get to the real world, they will be shot down. They will, they will be able to handle what the society is going to do to them because they are in this part of the short society now. But when they get out there, they will work for them. Due to the pressures of Colgate University, often many students of color find themselves left out in the cold and find themselves in the position of being an outsider. Due to these pressures, oftentimes student organizations have been formed, such as LASSO and the African American Student Alliance. Also, with the formation of special interest houses such as HRC and La Casa Pan Latina Americana, these support groups often find themselves essential to the existence of students of color. Yet, their perceptions and their purpose vary from person to person on this campus. That's when I lived in the uh, Harlem Renaissance Center. So that was pretty much a, uh, a quick jump into the racial uh, happenings on campus and uh, even a little too early for me. Uh, it, it wasn't a very enjoyable experience. I didn't, uh, it, was, it was very, uh, it appeared to me as very segregated. Um, we were really weren't given a chance to interact with the rest of the people, uh, mainly the African Americans in the dorm room. And to a point, I don't think we really wanted to. But uh, you know, there, there seemed to be a lot of hostilities between I guess, the Caucasians and the Afro Americans, not only on the, on the floor, but uh, you know, through the whole dorm room. I really, the only time I really spent was studying, sleeping, and showering. And um, 
And I did spend a lot of time in expression I did a lot of work. Fortunately, I did, I did nothing there. And uh, uh, I played soccer, so it really wasn't for the freshmen that I knew on the soccer team, you guys, uh, it, it could have been a lot, a lot worse, but I managed to get through it. But just a lot of um, uncomfortable situations and things that happened. They really sort of set me off. And <clears throat> looking back on it now, I just don't, I don't feel the dorm. But dorm as an idea was, was a good idea, but, but it's not working in its proper way. How do you think they can make it better so that, uh, I don't think they should have one. It's like, it's like a whole different community down there of, of the Afro-Americans. This is the way I view it as, you know, they're living together. I mean, they're, they're having a good time. They're enjoying themselves, and they probably like it. But looking at, from my viewpoint, they are totally segregated from, you know, up on top of the hill. You know, I, I think everybody should live together. And, of course, I see the essential value of HRC and what that but and the cultural center as forms of um, support system for our survival. I know that if we didn't have these three establishments, I wouldn't have stayed at home because these are the only places where I feel secure, where I feel welcome, and where I can um, relate to other people with the same types of interests I do. Um, I think that we are viewed as separatists, but that's simply because what people don't understand how it feels to be in a classroom most of the day being the only person of color there. I think the HRC is a wonderful, wonderful thing for the students of color. From what I understand, it's, its creation has changed the retention rate of, of African Americans that correlate dramatically. I know everyone says something to me, it's got to be something good. And I, I understand its premise as far as removing the stress of being in a, what is it, 90% white environment. European, Northern European, white, heterosexual environment all day. That's, you know, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think it's misunderstood. I don't think the white students need to make an effort to understand it rather than saying, how can they segregate themselves? I think that's a real problem. And that's not, that's the problem with, within the white students. That's the white folks that have to do with that. This administration in writing says that it fully supports diversity. Due to the power dynamics, we feel that the university has the power and the moral obligation to fully support diversity. What do you think the role of administration is? I think we have a wonderful program and orientation program for the first year students. The great commander and in the first 10 days are overwhelmed with all of this information and then we don't you know, address that again. And maybe we can spread that out over time so that as you become more mature and more, hopefully become more mature and more able to address these issues. And not, not once you've had some experience here, call it, then go back and address these issues. And I think the administration can have a huge role in facilitating some sort of mandatory discussion. in providing uh, a system, uh, providing some type of uh, a system where every student benefits from it, not just certain, certain individuals. I mean, the school has to, to uh, one of its goals should be 
should be just that to the best of how we can. So as of yet, I still haven't seen that happen anymore. As a senior black lady, and as a man of color, I have found my experiences with administration, in the classroom, in the dining hall, on the sports field, have had a tremendous effect on my overall life here and experience as a student. And I think that for it to be a change to improve student life, it has to come from all levels. And administration has to play a role, the student body has to play a role, faculty has to play a role. It has to be an implementation into the curriculum that allows people, people's cultures to be expressed and their histories to be acknowledged. Until then, the battle will never be won on any side. You can have student protests every day, but if administration isn't going to budge, it's not going to help you. Um, you can support administration, you can support the alumni, you can support the faculty, but no matter what happens, we have to look at this at a societal level. And if there's going to be any change on a national basis, we need to realize that issues of racism, multiculturalism, um, need to be addressed. They cannot, they can no longer be pushed on the the world. And as soon as we can all admit that we're all ignorant of multiculturalism and ignorant of not being educated correctly, then that will be the first step in correctifying the miseducation that has occurred for century and century. And ultimately, it becomes the commitment of every individual to take this mission on and to try to teach and teach their peers, but at the same time, learn for themselves. And uh, my message to everyone is, reflect for a minute upon the education that you received and think about where you'd like, what you'd like to learn more about. And hopefully with that, that should get you on the right track. I guess that the, uh, the message I want to give to incoming students is uh, I'm going to preface my message particularly to white students uh, coming into this campus. And what I want to say, I guess, is just as you come here um, as a freshman, as a first year student, you're not going to feel real sure about uh, what you're doing. And you're going to have a tendency to gravitate just towards the group of people or uh, the things that make you feel more welcome. And uh, I think probably what's going to happen is, or at least what happened in my case, is that the first year, you know, a couple of years you're here, you're not going to really see the overall picture of uh, student life at Colgate University. And it's really easy to kind of get just attracted into one, uh, one mode of the social life or uh, classes you take and things like that. And so what I would really recommend is before, when you first get here, you just have to be aware that you're, the old, you're, you're part of the overall picture, even though you don't see uh, your place in the racial structure of Kobe University. That's part of you know, white privilege, is that you don't have to deal with these, uh, these issues right from the start, you know? But even though you not, may not be dealing with them or you see them, you know, you're part of it. And uh, you would have to, to think about that and see what kind of classes you're taking, uh, what lectures you go to, where you hang out, uh, who your friends are, what you're doing, you know. And right from the start, I, you know, you really step up on uh, maturing as an individual. And right from the start, you see the overall racial picture of Colby, Colby University. And, uh, and I just really urge you to try to branch out, uh, learn things about other cultures right from the start. Uh, and, you know, and four years later, who knows, uh, you know, where you'll be, what you'll be thinking. But uh, just get going on right away. Don't wait. Uh, don't wake up during the year. You know, find out what you can do. Okay. I've just seen in our video, in our presentation, um, the pressure of being outside impacts people, and I heard it very much. Therefore, I feel it's something that needs to be addressed. So my um, my last statement is going to three. It's going to be three people to the administration, to white students. Uh, administration, I beg of you, please take a stand. Um, you have the ability, you have the power, you have the uh, uh, moral responsibility that you should not allow students of color to go under the pressures that we have shown in this demonstration. Please, I beg of you, any freshman orientation, go through the steps, go through the definitions, and fully support the support groups that we uh, discussed in our presentation, such as all the members such as our Costa and our team, our main kind of discuss the interest, discuss why we have those, and discuss why you support them fully. Therefore, you will eliminate all of any types 
sort of misconstrued that occur to freshmen on campus so that they fully understand what's the purpose of these organizations. To students of color, I say that you will be an outsider on this campus without a doubt. There's no way about it. This campus will not be you and probably still not be um, Socially, politically, um, and educationally, you must, you must realize that you are an outsider. So all I can say is make the best of it and realize that it's just a means to win. Um, also, I'd like to stress your involvement and within the organization of color. As Kwame Terrell said when he came up here in 1991, if you're not an organization, it means nothing. So realize that the only way change is going to be made on this campus is through organizations. Individuals do nothing on this campus except get squashed. To white students, and I feel like I can speak to white students because to be at this university, I've had to know how to be a white man or a black man. So that's why I feel like talking. To them. I say, look, you've seen our demonstration and you feel and realize that being an outsider is extremely painful. All I can say is that please try to get involved, learn other people's cultures, learn what your culture is and learn how it's impacted other people's cultures. And realize, I think white privilege says it all, realize what white, white privilege is. And from then on, by respecting your culture, realize that you don't want to respect your culture by knowing what your culture is, truly what your culture is, not what you've been told throughout high school. So learn what your culture is, truly, and then learn to respect other people's cultures. And being outside, numbers, numbers are important, but numbers is not going to solve the problem. Respect of other people's cultures will solve the problem. Peace. I guess what I'd like to say is something to incoming students. Um, basically, to white students, but I think it's really important to um, not get too comfortable with that. It's really easy to do that, especially for white students. Um, to get real comfortable and um, to really just not, uh, to sort of have just a real good time here. I think that's important, but I also, also think there's a lot that everyone can do. Um, and I think one of the important things to do is to really um, be critical and really question things and to really um, realize that there is a, a big problem here with diversity and there is a big problem here with racism. And if you don't see that, I think you need to work harder um, and really open your eyes. Um, I think you'd be pulling yourself by not doing it. And I think that's a real problem. I think a lot of students, a lot of students go through four years here. Um, we don't, don't really see what's going on with any kind of problems. Um, I think really just be critical of um, what yeah, there's a lot you can do and um, that, you know, it's never too late to change the way you might have been learning about things here. Um, you don't have to get locked into the way you're living your life here. And, uh, what the four of us have tried to do here is really uh, just get a start uh, for your own reflections on, on being an outsider here on the COVID campus or what it's like for an outsider here on the COVID campus. We've tried to present material and critical questions that are allowed to engage in critical discussions that are necessary for the world. Um, so what are all these questions that we um, and hopefully, with enough interaction, with enough exchange between the groups between students, we can all get to come together and try to solve some of these issues and deal with them on the table. And I want to leave you all with a quote. Remember, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So get involved and be heard. One of the observations that we made while making this video is the prevalence of white privilege on this campus. Because of the disproportionate number of white students on this campus, much of the racial tension is covert and goes on unnoticed by these students. We feel that further awareness by these white students of the pressures is necessary if any progress is to be made. Now it's up to you. 
How do you see these issues on campus, and where do you stand in the fight for diversity?